Hi, uh, my name is uh, Gary McDougall, and uh, presenting with me is uh, Ty Fitzpatrick, and we're presenting uh, using Sync with ArcGIS Pro 2.1. So uh, in Pro 2.1, you can now take your feature layer data from your services offline in Pro and work with it. So why do we add this feature? Well, there's a couple of uh, key workflows we're after. The first one is we want to be able to be able to take their data uh, offline on, onto Pro and go to remote locations and work with the data, similar to what you do with Collector. You want to be able to do your work, maybe it could be over a large period of time, a week or two, and then um, collect a whole bunch of information locally. And then when you come back and plug into the, into the, into the uh, internet, you want to be able to sync up that data. And so that's one motivation. And another one is, say you're working in the office and you're working with your you know, enterprise services or your, and you um, there's a planned shutdown to do maybe some maintenance on the server. And you want to continue to keep working. But what you can do with this functionality is you can take it offline, your data, continue to work while the maintenance is happening and the services are down. And then when they come back up later in the day, you can just sync up and keep working. So in order to take your data offline in Pro 2.1, We've added a, a new set of commands on the map ribbon. And you can see in the screenshot here, I've kind of highlighted it. And the main button to notice is this download maps button. So when you click that download maps button, what it's going to do is it's going to take all of your sync enabled feature layers in your map and it's going to copy the data for those and download them into a mobile geodatabase that's going to run on your desktop that's running, uh, that's running Pro. And then once they're that data is in that mobile geodatabase on your desktop, those layers are going to automatically switch to reference the data in that mobile geodatabase. Now at that point, you're good to go. You can unplug and you can make edits. You can go, you know, any remote location, you're good. You don't need to have access to the internet to do your work. As you're making your edits, they're being collected and stored within that mobile geodatabase. Now when you come back in the office, you can plug in, hit sync, and it'll synchronize all the edits that you've done in that mobile geodatabase while offline. And it'll also download any edits that happened on the server while you were offline to keep you up in sync with it. Now the nice thing with uh, offline in Pro 2.1 is that it, it is uh, bidirectional and it supports multiple bidirectional syncs. So in ArcMap we had similar functionality, call it create local copy for editing. Uh, but that by default would go to like a file geodatabase and really be a checkout check-in model where you download the data, you make your edits to your data, you check it in, you're done, you have to check it out again. Here you can maintain that offline data in your pro session for an extended period of time and just can periodically sync to keep it up to date. Now when you're done working with the data in the offline mode, there's a button called remove that you click. What remove will do It'll give you an opportunity to do one last sync, and then, it, and if you choose yes or no, it'll either sync or not, and then it'll take those layers that are in your uh, Pro map and switch them back to reference the online feature service layers, and you're back to where you started. So I mentioned that the layers in your map need to be sync enabled feature, feature service layers. So what is required and enabled to make them sync enabled? Well, if they're hosted, uh, feature layers, you just go into the items page as the owner or the administrator and there's a sync checkbox. When you click that sync checkbox, it enables your data for sync and they can participate in this workflow. If it's non-hosted data, if it's referencing data running in an enterprise geodatabase in your organization, you need to pre-prepare the data beforehand. And that is either versioning the data and adding global IDs or archive enabling the data, having it non-versioned and archive enabled, and global IDs. Now in uh, Pro 2.1, if you want to take the base map offline, it's a separate process, but that's something we're working on integrating into Pro 2.2 to tie, we'll probably talk more about that. Okay, so let's get to the demos. There's three demos we're planning. The first one is the, you know, download, edit, and sync, uh, uh, sync demo. The next one is working with read-only feature server layers, and the last one is working with version data. And with that, I'll hand things over to Ty to... Uh, I don't know which number it is. It's four. 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 You good? Yeah. Okay. Hey. Uh, cool. Thanks, Gary. 
Uh, okay, so my first demo is going to be, oh, oh, first, how many of you guys have ever published a sync-enabled service? Okay, so a few. Just, uh, I'm not going to do the whole thing, uh, but when you right-click, so here's a file geodatabase, valves, I'm connected to my online organization. Uh, so some of you may be familiar with this already. Right-click on the layer, share as a web layer in Pro, uh, and then you'll get this page up here. Because I'm going to RTS Online, I just see those layer types. On the configuration page, make sure you check editing and sync enabled. Uh, editing will obviously allow you to give the, uh, allow you to edit the data, and sync will allow you to download uh, and download, make edits, and sync back repeated times. So that's the sync, the sync functionality. So if I just publish this up there at RTS Online, the end result would be what I've got here. So I, I did that and I added it back into my map because that's, that's more about what this uh, presentation is about. So I've got a map here with that same layer that I would have just, uh, just published with Sync. And like Gary said, up here is the download map button. So now when I click this, I, I'm, I'm using 2.2 because I was in the road ahead. So you wouldn't see this dialog in 2.1, but it's going to be there in 2.2. So this gives me the ability to include my base map and tile in, in, along with my features. So if I do a download here, it's gonna actually, I'm giving you a little road ahead demo, um, it will take out just the features that I've got here, but as well cut out the tile layer and create a TPK. The base map part, that's 2.2, so that's coming in, just in, in June. The features are already there in 2.1. So we're gonna complete this uh, workflow uh, uh, by the UC. So uh, so right now it's ex extracting those tiles going down as deep as it can and going to create a TPK. It'll also create a BTPK for you if you have vector tile layers. Um, so that, that again that's coming in, uh, that, that tile layer part is coming in, um, in, in June by the UC for 2.2. So as this, as this is extracting you can do the same thing, like Gary said, I'm using hosted feature services. You can also do uh, map, the, the map service plus feature service with sync enabled, like Gary said too, on your enterprise as well. So once this extracts, hopefully this won't take too long. Maybe I should have plugged in. <laughs> Do you want to, hey Gary, do you want to do the, do you want me to come back to this? We could. Do you want to do that? Sure. How about you do your, your bit and then I'll come back. Okay. So oh, wait, it's done. Ooh. I got lucky. Just I never know. I was always afraid to plug in the network cable here because then it, you, you don't know what happens sometimes. Okay, so. So here now I've got my extract here. I've got a couple features and I got my tile layer. If you look over here, um, you'll see that I've got my valve layer and I've got a little TPK here for my base map. My, my regular base map, my topo layer is actually turned off. And I have um, my valve layer, which is in using this little mobile geo database. So I've got a little clipped out piece of data here and if I go and edit this, and I can create a feature, right? And once I create those features, I can then sync those edits as many times as I want back to my hosted feature service in ArcGIS Online. So, um, so I, I can continuously sync and sync and sync until I'm ready to go, and then I could use the remove button, like Gary said. I, I'm a little reluctant to do all the workflows right now because it's a little slow, but that wasn't too bad. So if I wanted to remove it, let's add one more feature, because I think we're okay. Hopefully we're good on time. And I'm gonna add one more feature, and I'm going to remove it. And like Gary said, it's going to, when you remove the downloaded map, it's going to say, would you like to sync? And it'll do that one last sync before it'll prompt you, before you um, uh, switch this layer back over to the hosted feature layer. So 
this is the ability. This is, gives you the ability to edit multiple times uh, by taking your layers offline. The TPK will still be available for you. So, for example, uh, so when we get to 2.2, if you want to make a bigger area for your base map and reuse that for multiple areas potentially, that's another way to kind of uh, not have to take that hit, taking that TPK offline. So you can kind of reuse it. So if I Uh, so the question is, um, will actually when you hit remove, will that actually remove the mobile geo database from the local machine? The answer is yes. Yes, it will. So you can see over here now it's gone. So we remove that and we delete it off the system. Okay. So the second demo, hopefully I'm still not cutting into time. So the read-only case. So I'm going to go over here to RTS Online. I'm logged in as Tate. Okay, and I've got a service up here. And what I want to do is add this with full editing control, just to show you. And the read-only case would be, say, I have editing turned off. I have full access when I'm the owner, so I can edit this thing. Right? So even though editing is turned off on the layer because I'm the owner, I can do whatever I want. And I will, uh, I'm not going to do that yet. So, okay, when I go over to the read-only case, so in this case I'm logged in as Ty. And what I want to do is I'm going to download this guy. And of course, I'm not going to do the base map this time. And I'm going to download the features. And by me being Ty, I'm accessing a service that's owned by Tate that does not have editing privileges. So if you look at the, if I, if you look at the service, it does not have editing privileges, but it does have sync. So I'm, I'm, I have the ability to take the features offline but as Ty, I cannot edit and sync those back, right? Let's let this keep going. Come on. Am I running out of time? Yeah, I'm good. Okay. Should have zoomed in a little tighter. Okay, good. So now I got them offline. Okay, so now what I'd like to do is go over here and I'm going to add a point right there in the middle of the pond. And then over here, I'm going to say sync and it will download that one particular feature right there in the middle of the pond. So even if I had made edits here, it would not have it would not sync my edits up, but it will pull the edit down that, that the owner made. So Tate made the edit, I got the edit from Tate, but anything that I would have done in this map would not be synced back. So that's the read-only scenario. That, so there it is, right over the pond. So that gives you that ability to do a read-only uh, uh, checkout and syncing edits. So those are the two workflows I have to show. Um, and I'll jump to the third one. Cool. So, so the third one has to do with working with um, Version data. The third one has to do with working with version data. How many people here work with version data? A fair amount of you guys? Okay, cool. So I mentioned that one of the requirements that you can have for your feature service layers, if it's referencing like an enterprise GDA database, is to have it version and have global IDs. When you use the sync API from the feature service with version data, when you take the data offline, we actually create a version for that data that's private to that, to that data. So in this case, I've done that. I've actually taken some data offline, and you can see on the on the left map, it's labeled offline. This is actually referencing a mobile geo database running on the on this machine, and I have a second map beside it that's referencing the same data but running from the service, right? And so, if you'll notice, I made some I've made some edits on both sides. On the service side, you look at these green dots. Notice like the edits I made are within this Neighborville Country Club area. I have some green dots. These are things that I, I, I added since I took the data offline. And on the offline side, I added some red dots at the bottom, or I've made some updates. So what I can do is I can call sync, and what that's going to do is going to grab those edits that I made in my, in my offline map, and it's going to upload those to the server, and it's going to apply those edits, and then it'll download any edits that have been made on the server since back down to my, back to my offline client. Now in this case, um, I'm not sure how long it'll take. Hopefully it'll go pretty quick. There, it's finishing. 
So in this case when it's finished and I hit refresh, you notice nothing's changed. I still don't have those red dots down here. And on this side if I hit refresh, I still don't have the green dots up here. Now why is that? Well it's because those edits went into a version that's running on the enterprise side. So what you need to do when you're working with this stuff is you need to be running scripts to do reconciles and posts to share all the edits from your mobile clients so that they can then upload and download with each other. So what I have here is a Python script. Now if you're not remembering all these details don't worry about it. We have this all documented in the help. And uh, for the sake of time I think I'll just hit run. And what this is going to do is it's going to go through, it's going to, it's a Python script it, and it's all GP tools that are running within uh, my desktop. And it's going to find all of the versions that have version names that are such that we know that they're offline, associated with offline data. It's going to reconcile and post all of those. And then it's going to make it such that everything is shared. So next time when I go to sync, I'll, I'll then be able to see everything. So that's actually completed. I have this little message at the bottom when I know it's done. So I'll come back over here and I hit refresh on the feature service side. And now you see those red dots. So that data that was in that private version has now been moved into the, the version that I published from. And then if I come back in here and I hit sync, I'll then pull those green dots down that were on the server down to my mobile client. So now how should you work with this data? Like why with this kind of situation how, how would I want to work with the data? Notice that the green dots came down. Well this is, this is a kind of a typical scenario where say you've got field workers out in the field. They collect data all day. Come in at the end of the day. Plug in. Then uh, and they hit sync. Then they go home. Overnight this script runs. Come in the next day hit sync before they go out in the morning, they're up to date, keep working. So that's kind of the workflow that we've envisioned for this. The reason why we create a version per offline user is because with version data if you're uploading edits, it scales really well when each of them has a private version. So, and then that also gives you an opportunity to QA, QC the data before it gets merged into the common default version which happened in this case. So my script in this case was a really basic script. It just went ahead and did reconcile and post lost and wins. But you can add all sorts of business logic to each of those versions to make sure the data is good and then make adjustments so that then when the field worker comes in the next day and downloads, they have good data and then that the data that the field workers uploaded has uh, some checks and balances before everyone sees it. So those are some advantages and some of the ways that you work with version data. So uh, I mentioned there are some articles on this stuff. If you want to find out, um, if you want to find that information, a good way to do it is to Google Esri feature service version sync. If you Google that, uh, then it comes up with this topic that talks all about these workflows and how to do them properly. And it also, this topic itself has a link to this automated uh, reconcile and post operations for sync enabled data. And this is the script that I did and it steps it through and explains to you everything that, that it does. So I'll put this back if you want to kind of grab that picture of that or whatever. So you can go back and um, uh, you know look that up later. Yeah go ahead. Question is do you have anything to deal with conflicts that are? We you would, okay so the question is you would have to deal with conflicts in this scenario. Okay so, so what, what's happening here is um, I reconcile and posted and I did it in such a way that I said that the edits win. And so automatically they'll all win. But if you wanted to, you could add logic in your coding that would actually decide on which edits you want based on some business rules. Uh, or you can manually reconcile and post in desktop these versions and then you have full control over it. It's all up to you what you want to do. Yeah. I'm sorry, I can't. Does it work with the utility network is the question. That's actually a good point for the last slide that we're going to show. Um, which is what's coming. Okay, so what's next for this stuff? We, uh, we talked about some things. Um, one of them is support for pre-planned workflows. I believe that was shown in the plenary to a certain degree. Anyway, um, Pro will support that. That's something new that's on enterprise and in, and in, um, and in online. Um, feature service capability with branch version data. That's coming in 10.6.1 and that'll allow you to start using these workflows with utility network data. Initially the plan is simple features, read only, 
you don't have the full utility network in the mobile device in, in Pro. Eventually we'll get there, but the first step is just to give you kind of like those downloaded features. Uh, so that's, we're working on that for 10.6.1. Uh, annotation, attribute rules, and multi-patch data are three types of data that we don't yet support that have recently been added to the platform. Those are coming, we're working on those. Uh, more options for taking base maps offline, probably talk about that. Um, 2.2, it looks like it's coming. Attachment enhancements, there's some, in, some options we give you for attachments in feature services and, and web maps that Pro not, doesn't yet take advantage of. That's something we're looking at. And client side logging. So right now, if you wanted to troubleshoot, we have server side logging, but we don't have anything exposed client side. Just a matter of turning that on and, and making it available. So we're looking at that too. And uh, with that, any other questions? Okay. Yeah. So, question is, what version of the enterprise shield database was working here? So, Sync was uh, we shipped Sync in ten two one ten two two timeframe, and it it should work with that. In my case, I'm demoing everything with uh, ten six, and and so uh, releases in between should work. I would recommend going with the newer releases just because of bug fixes and improvements we've made along the way. The question is if you have custom SOEs and SOIs, it's going to work the same as mobile. Um, yes, uh, there's nothing, this is another client like Collector, so the, the same way it works with that, I would expect to work with this. Uh, no. <laughs> you, uh, yeah, no, you don't. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's completely accessible to you. You can do whatever you want with it. So, yep. Any more questions? So, yeah, so the question is, is that uh, readable with an SDK? It should be. It's all the same technology on both, so it should be. Yeah, so, so if you could have multiple workspaces in your web app, one could be version, one could be non-version, and we'll, that'll work. So is this, can you have additional Yeah, so your, your question is, can you also do version editing workflows in ArcMap while at the same time doing this? The answer is yes, yeah. There's, there's nothing to stop that. It, there, it's uh, ultimately doing the same uh, version editing, whether you do through the service or through ArcMap. Can I go back, to the question about the resolution, did you mean the number of LODs that you take down? Oh, so, so yes, you can control the, we go down as deep as you can. So based on the number, of, based on the extent and the number of uh, the max record count, and we go down as deep as you can. However, you can pull it back if you want, as much as you want. But I would think that most people would want to go as deep as you can. We, we go as deep as you can by default, and then you'll notice that little, there was a little combo box, I didn't talk about it, but you can set it to a, a smaller LOD. With vector tile layers, you're pretty much gonna always go as deep as you can, because there's, there's really no hit there, it's, it's pretty lightweight. So okay. yes. I think we're pretty much out of time, so we can take more questions afterwards. Some other questions? Yeah, thank you. <laughs>